warmly welcome you for another edition of In Conversation brought to you by Daily Mirror. And it is imperative for us to share our platforms with incredible people who do amazing things, of course, sometimes silently. And um, we thought it's high time with this, um, with what's going on around in the country. We take our safety precautions and take series online and share some amazing inspirational experiences that, that could really help you also move forward. And today we have with us, uh, she's an accountant by profession and she's also the executive director of OSM Holdings. And she is also a very inspirational, I mean, a role player in my eyes, at least um, with the women in management. I actually meet her for the first time uh, speaking uh, after the New Generation Awards. So I, I just thought it was um, a good you know, choice to share my platform with her. Onila Karanayaka, thank you so much for joining you with us for In Conversation. Thank you, Hirsh. It's very good to be here today. Um, so who exactly, like if you could maybe ex tell who Onila is, you're, you're multifaceted, you work in different fields, you voice different causes that are close to your heart. But who is Onila? Who, is she, who was she as a child growing up? What are her educational interests, her career interests? So um, if I just talk from childhood on, um, I'm from a very close-knit family. I have um, two younger sisters, um, quite much younger to me, actually. And um, I actually went to school um, at AIS um, from a very small age. And then I had about, like, say, eight to ten cousins who all together ended up saying, OK, let's all go to this one school. Um, so that's how I moved to CIS, and from there I went on up until um, A levels and finished. Um, absolutely loved my sports, so I was very much into sports um, in school as well. It's actually sports that pulled me through my um, education as well. Um, and um, then post school, I actually got into doing uh, CIMA. Um, and my hobbies are more traveling. Uh, I like to read a little bit. I like to cook. I actually really like to cook. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of me. Yes, and, and I think you really expressed your liking towards sports. How, what kind of sports did you play and how did sportsmanship really help you in your growth curve? So, um, so back in school, this is not me any time in the last couple of years, but back in school, very much into like all kinds of sports, like basketball, netball, athletics. Um, so I did like so many, right? But um, I think with sports comes a, a sense of um, kind of teamwork and it kind of like really helps you to um, understand people through sports and um, kind of persevere for one on your own together. Um, and really keep you motivated, um, keep you fit, keep you healthy, but also motivated. And it gives you a real balance in life as well. Because I felt like with school, it wasn't just about, um, it wasn't just about the studies and uh, just a very one-sided thing. It was, uh, I used to look forward to it because with sports, you meet so many people, you uh, learn how to balance your school life to your um, work, uh, to your not work life but to your sports life and that kind of comes into your work now where you're able to kind of bring a bit of balance as well um, and I think that all kind of stems from my sports and um, the sportsmanship qualities that I was able to accumulate over that. Yes and um, being someone's pretty and explorative you choose your career path in accounting majorly so uh, what really inspired you to step into accountancy? Were there any ground reasons or was it something you just kind of decided over time? So um, funnily enough, from a very young age, I want to be a lawyer. But um, I kind of didn't do my signalies in school. So I didn't learn how to uh, do the reading and writing part. I can speak very well, but I didn't really learn how to read and write uh, as a subject in school. And um, that is kind of a basis that you need to get into law in Sri Lanka. So um, 
I mean, I finished school and I was wondering, you know, what what do I need to be doing? What can I do? And well, my dad wasn't very happy to send us abroad because he's very he's very attached with us. And he was like, you know what? I don't really want you guys to go abroad, stay here, you know, that kind of thing. So I was figuring out, you know, what what can I do that's here? And um, I kind of followed thereafter in my dad's footsteps. Uh, he's a fully uh, qualified accountant. So I thought, okay, you know what? Let me try to do SEMA and see how this goes. And that's kind of how I stepped into it. Um, never thought I would do it. Uh, never thought I'd get into that profession, but um, it has helped me. It has actually helped me quite a bit in work as well. Yes, and I think you're educational grounding and then your sportsmanship. I think it's this amalgamation of experience has also probably helped you uh, kickstart your journey in entrepreneurship. So you are also the executive director of OSM Holdings. And to my knowledge, it's a solution provider, you know, pertaining to logistics. So I would like to hear about OSM Holdings and your role within the company. Absolutely. So um, OSM Holdings is actually, um, it was a, it, it is a family business actually. And it is to do with uh, a whole array and sort of 3PL logistics. Um, it started up about say 50, 50 plus years ago um, by my grandfather and subsequently came on to my dad who expanded it into a different area. And from there onwards, um, I kind of stepped into it and um, thought, you know what, let's take the challenge and do this and uh, kind of got into it. So we deal from every part of logistics, like a 3PL from freight to warehousing to transportation, um, which is not the generic female industry that you generally get into. And especially at an age where I was, uh, which was about four or five years ago, um, I did sometimes question myself, like, what am I doing here? And um, but the best part of it is, even though it was a family business, um, I think people think, oh, it's the family business, so you just, uh, you are the next generation of it, so you get into it. I don't think that is the case. I think you need to walk into work every day, and especially when it is a family business, you need to earn your place more and more every day. That You need to go and you need to bring so much uh, of your own flavor into work. You need to bring so much of, um, you know, so much newness into it. Uh, and that's when you can really add value to that whole family business concept. And it's not as easy as people think, but I, so I, when I actually went into work, I didn't just go straight into top management and figure out, oh, this is what I'm gonna do. I actually trained there for about six to one year. Um, and I learned from bottom up. And from there, I thought, okay, I need to also expose myself to a different environment. And I actually worked on my own uh, in a couple of other companies for a good three to four years, um, where I really learned how to work more with people who are not just also only going to say yes or no to me. But I really learned an environment, a different environment there. And I also kind of learned how to discipline myself, you know, like going to work at a certain time, um, do certain tasks in a certain way that is required of you. And I think once I was ready, once I felt like I had gotten that discipline and that kind of exposure to the environment that I kind of wanted to get in a different form, that's when I actually came. And when I felt I was ready and I was able to add value um, to a, a level of our business, that's when um, I stepped in. Coming from a strong family background and, of course, having to um, continue a family legacy in the space of business, do you feel any sort of pressure or do you face any sort of challenges or hurdles, you know, especially being a female entrepreneur that, you know, who aspires to move forward? So, um, honestly, that's a really good question. Um, I think when it comes to family, being a woman, and being a young person um, in the entrepreneurial world, it uh, you get prejudged, right? Uh, one, in the family point, oh, it was handed to her. Two, when you're a woman, oh, um, you know, how are they? Um, how do they work? How do they react? When you're young, people don't really want to trust in you and 
they don't know how you're going to take things on. So I certainly hit the trifecta of um, challenges, I think, there. But I think those challenges also became my strengths because I feel like once you push through everything and you get to the table, it is what you kind of put onto the table. It's what you bring to the table. And once you are able to allow yourself to show that out, I think that it, it becomes a little bit easier. So I think those challenges that came actually worked a little bit as a strength for me as well. And the strengths become stepping stones to kind of make positive changes in your path. And I think one of the things that you aspire to do is, is to incorporate and strengthen the role of the woman uh, in the workspace. You aspire to bring, in, encourage women to uh, partake, especially in the industry you work in. So what's your perspective on that? So with population in Sri Lanka of about 21 plus million people. And out of that, we are predominantly a female society with about, I think, 50 to 53% of it being a female uh, uh, population. And from the industry that I'm in, we represent about five to 6%, um, maybe a little bit more now of our Sri Lankan GDP. And when you come in value terms of a five to six billion US dollar industry in Sri Lanka, and you've got a 53% uh, female uh, population who hasn't really been included into the workforce. I'm not saying that everyone will come in, but a good proportion of it coming in, that is, I think in the long run, it is a big benefit for the country and to each family, because I feel like there's a saying, when you help a woman, you help an entire family, because I feel like women have their priorities sorted out. Um, they always think about their family. They always think about their children. They always think about everyone around them. And um, giving education or giving work to um, a female is really uplifting and one and entire other generation and themselves and their families as well. So I feel like, especially my industry as well, about uh, eight to 10 years ago, it was seen as a very male dominated industry. But I think now with more and more women stepping out, more and more women coming into more top positions, I feel like more women need to come in. They are coming in with, into the industry and they're also getting more recognized for it. So even within us, even within um, my company, one thing that I really want to do is not only focus on, uh, bring more women into it, but also focus on the ones that are there and make them feel valued, promote them up. Um, make them feel like a valued part of every decision that is being taken in the company as well. And I think in the last eight years that has worked really, really well. We've increased female participation. We've increased uh, more female decision making in our company, as well as we've turned general um, male roles into more unisex roles where now males and females, they don't have, uh, they don't particularly look only at time restrictions and, you know, the way that women were viewed before. They really go out of their way and they have so much discipline in their work and they are very task oriented. And I think um, that's kind of how we've developed ourselves. It's really nice to see a lot of women coming forward and, and encouraging. It's always, as long as it's a positive impact, I think it's important that uh, they are seen as an example, not just by other women, by other men, children, and you know anyone particularly. And I think uh, the being in a digital age, I think digital platforms also play a very consequential role when it comes to us perceiving the world and us kind of connecting with the rest of the world. And, and we see that uh, due to many circumstances, sometimes you have to sympathize, sometimes you have to empathize, but due to many circumstances, we see strong, uh, empowering individuals, achieving individuals, thriving individuals, sometimes being subject to harassment um, sometimes it's not really restricted to gender itself, but we see a lot of bullying and, and harassment happening on social media. And, and to my knowledge, I know that you're very, um, you're, you know, voicing um, against cyberbullying is something that's very close to your heart. So I would like to hear your take on how you see these issues, especially when we're very digitally active. Okay. So um, I recently have had 
So I had quite an interesting interview just um, about two, three days ago with um, Rishini, who basically brought out some stunning figures on social media. And how much, how many people are actually on um, a digital platform now? But um, this is, and, and this is something that I've started and want to keep voicing my opinion because I feel like I've also experienced it and been at the wrong receiving end of the bad aspect of social media. Um, I don't say all parts of it is bad. I feel like in a time where COVID um, has brought so much change to the workplace and how we just do things, um, social media is very important. Like. I mean, I don't think even our interview today could be done if at all we didn't have technology uh, via Zoom and all of this stuff, right? But I also feel like the more you get on social media, the more you get onto a digital platform, there should also be a growing sense of responsibility on each individual person. Um, plus, you also have to... Um, you also have to be able to manage what really comes out of it. Um, there's, there's so much good that comes out of it, that, but there's also so much irresponsible work that comes out of it as well. Some people have made so, um, some people have made business out of social media, right? It's, it's a business for them and it's amazing. I, I, I mean, like the people who do their work on Instagram, like influencers and bloggers on YouTube, on um, even TikTok, I'm I'm amazed. Right? I mean, the the amount of detail and intricacy that they need to go to to keep doing these things are amazing. But also, it's sad to see on the flip side of how bad it can also be used. How it can be used to stunt a person's growth. How it can be used to stunt a youth personality's growth as well. Um, so I feel like with all of this responsibility of freedom of speech and social media coming on, I feel like it is also each person's responsibility as well to be um, sure of what they put out, of how much they regulate their content. And um, also one thing I say is, um, I think the easiest way to actually do this is to do your good source checkings, right? Um, and this is something I said on your platform once before as well. Um, before you like, share, comment, retweet, uh, WhatsApp forward, or do any kind of thing, just think about it. Think of the logicality of what you are uh, reposting or sharing and see, is it, I mean, how does it affect an individual? Is it the right thing that's being put out? And um, I honestly didn't, I, I always shied away from media. I didn't really get into interviews. I didn't want to come into any of these, but, um, uh, an idol more of mine or someone who I, I respect very, very much, um, Sulochana Segera actually started putting me out via the WIM platform and saying, no, you need to talk, you need, to, you have so much you want to say, um, but you don't put it out. And she really pushed me out there. And I realized, yes, it's a good thing. I mean, um, if I have a platform, I'll use it for the best possible way that I can use it. And um, you know, speak out about something that I truly believe in, that's something that has affected me and a family as a whole, but also make something right, voice your opinion, and maybe that one thing can actually change a lot of, um, a, a lot of the ways of what's going on as well. So it's certainly something that is very close to me. I'm very passionate, I speak very passionately about it. I speak very passionately against the bad side of it, but also, for the good things that come out of it. Yes, and I think um, your passion has, has definitely paid off because we you did partake in a wonderful series uh, to create informative content uh, about the situation. And at the same time, you also play uh, an emerging role with women in management. And that is the first time I also uh, see you and meet you. So I would like to hear uh, what your experience is like with women in management and also with the new generation chapter. So, um, so once I actually got into work, I got into a bit of a stable side of you know, uh, work balance. I thought it's not good enough just to only read, but you should also be able to give back. And I, also, I, I wanted to work with organizations that 
do a lot of uh, actual good, meaning it's not just um, the sound bites that come out of it, if I may say, but work that is actually being done. And I mean, if you go to see, even during this Corona time, um, uh, our founder of WIM has basically been doing so many food drives. Uh, we do so much promotion of uh, females alone through uh, online platforms that allow them to sell their products. And um, we have so many award ceremonies that um, recognize women from all around Sri Lanka. It is not just one particular part of it, but all around Sri Lanka. And um, with that, about a year ago, we thought it's not only the female force of Sri Lanka that is also um, needs to be recognized, but rather the youth as well, because I feel like the youth of our country has so much to give back. They are so well um, educated, innovative, inventive, um, yet they don't, they're not given the correct platform to actually show this out or they're not recognized enough and are not able to um, bring out all of their ideas. And hence, we created uh, the new generation chapter uh, by Win, which represents the male and the female part of the youth of Sri Lanka. And we successfully had our first ever um, new generation awards uh, last December. And we're doing it once again um, in a couple of months. Um, and actually nominations have been opened up for the new generation awards as well. And I, I just, I urge all uh, the youth of Sri Lanka, if you're between the age of 15 to 30, um, go to our platform uh, at www.womenmanagement.org and nominate yourself, uh, make yourself, make your work heard, uh, give yourself that platform to really come up because there are so many winners who uh, used that award, used that platform, got so much recognition, got so much funding from the last um, award ceremony as well and are doing amazing things. So I, I just urge everyone to really go nominate themselves and, and get part of this youth uh, movement that WIM and the new generation chapter is doing together. Yes, I think it's, it's uh, important that we mention that please do, um, if you feel like you deserve a shot or if you know someone who is uh, deserving of this, uh, this is not limited to women. This is youngsters out there who's making positive social change, uh, whether it be in entrepreneurship, whether it be media, uh, there's so many avenues that are being recognized. So please don't hesitate to reach out and nominate uh, from women's, womeninmanagement.org. And uh, this is for the New Generation Award. So that is also a kind reminder. And, and with that, uh, I want to thank Onela for being a part of this online edition. Thank you so much for joining in with us. And we wish you all the very best. Thank you, Hirsh. Thank you very much for having me here as well. Thank you.